for my YouTube adventures, let's try something new. The Amateur Historian's Movie Review. Should you watch Ridley Scott's Medieval Flick? Will you like it or will it make you sick? We'll talk about Helms and the fight scene, that's true, to see if The Last Duel could be a film for you. Hello friends, Lauren back with you, and today, something different, Movie Review Day, because we're going to talk about The Last Duel. Yes, we're going to talk about a medieval movie, and I just watched it, and uh, so about a week ago, and I've let the thoughts kind of percolate, stew, bubble around in my brain, and uh, I thought I would share it with you because, you know, arms and armor and a lot of medieval stuff on my YouTube channel, and for you, the 680 followers now, anyone just happens to be tuning in, you might want to know, should you watch this movie, despite what Ridley Scott said about millennials, and he swore, and he blames it on cell phones, um, we're in a pandemic, and, uh, the movie didn't really get a lot of good marketing, and, um, you have a few flaws in your movie, so you put those three things together, I think that's the reason why it wasn't a big success at the theater, but maybe, just maybe, people will, um, watch this on streaming services, maybe they'll rent it from online movie rentals, that's what I did, the, um, in Canada, we had a Cineplex, and I used that to watch it on my TV, and, short answer, I enjoyed it. Is it a great movie? No. Is it a good movie? Yeah. I give it a 3.5 out of 5, or a 7 out of 10, however you want to, whatever scoring system you want to do. But, we're going to talk about the movie. There are good things, there are bad things. Um, yes, it does have a few color issues. I mean, it should be a little brighter. You know, we often have all of these medieval and medieval fantasy things that make everything look dark and grungy and dirty. Lots of browns, lots of biker leathers, and oh, it's just not like that. Costumes are good, though. We do have some color to them. We do have, uh, you know, it, it's looking a bit more medieval. I do not like Matt Damon's beard, and it's fake. Just shave him. He didn't need a beard. People shaved. You could have just put a little, little patch on him. I mean, ben Affleck looks a little weird, but at least he looks, to me, a bit more medievalish with his <laughs> mushroom hair and his little soul patch. Uh, great. But still, I don't think they were the actors that should have been in the film. They should have just written it and then pass it off to other people to act. Adam Driver, excellent. And uh, Jodie Com uh, Comer, excellent. Yeah, so we have... you. Could have, should have just replaced them. Um, but, I mean, they do an okay job. I'm not going to fault them. It is also a movie with some pretty heavy subject matter and uh, a few very uncomfortable scenes. That's a woman I'm... Yeah, they're cringe with, but that's the, it's the point of the story. Okay, I'm not really spoiling anything, but The Last Duel is about a trial by combat. Not the actual last duel in French history, but... It's 1386 when the duel takes place, and we see it in the movie, and um, it takes place in December, so that can, yeah, I, I give that a pass on looking kind of blue-tinged blue filter wintry scene. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I mean, it's, there are some historical inaccuracies in it, no movie's going to be perfect, but it gets better, except for the biggest thing, and I think this really sank it for those of us who are medieval enthusiasts, when we saw the trailer, we saw the really stupid hell. We saw the half helm. No, and the worst part about it is Adam's uh, Adam Driver's character, um, Jacques Legri, is a visor, and it's a half visor. What? It's but it's a left half visor. It's not a half visor. Why? Because, oh, they wanted to do their own stunts, and so they had to have the actor's faces shown. No, give them visors. Have them put the visor down, do the work, have them lift the visor after each of their passes with Lance, asking for a new Lance, put the visor back down, go again. We have bassinets with visors on them at this time, in the late 14th century, would have been perfect. So that, I think, got so much ridicule, and I think that took a lot of steam out of it. If you just had not done the stupid movie thing, like we always, I always complain, right? A lot of us do. You know, oh, why didn't they wear a helmet? There's no helm. Helmets matter. Protect your head, right? It's one of the most basic pieces of equipment. I have lots of them lying around. Uh, the kettle, barboot, uh, salad is here, uh, there's two more over there, but I have... 
it's important and I'm ranting I know so this really I think that's one of the choices that they made as a movie production and I think that really sank it because we saw this and we expected it to be full of medieval inaccuracies and we weren't so eager to go out and see it I mean I waited till I could watch it at home yeah so that doesn't really put box office numbers and I'm sure a lot of people did <sighs> Yeah, so Bat Helms, I think Matt Damon looks a little bit awkward, and it was a fake beard, and uh, he had irritation issues, and um, according to things I've read, he had to have ice packs on between scenes because it was bothering him so much. Just do without it. Shave, buddy. Uh, whatever. And, uh, yeah, so we've covered some of the things that I wanted to talk about, but there are some good things about this movie, too, so I think it is worth watch at home, certainly. Uh, if you can watch it on a streaming service when it comes out there, or even if you could spend five or six dollars, I don't know, a couple pounds, a few euros, whatever it's going to be to watch it in the comfort of your own home. You can pause it. It is an over two hours, so you want that. But it's interesting because you have, it's not exactly the same story told three times. It's three experiences of events told three times so you get different things added to each story it's not that oh it's this perspective and they change this and then it's the same scene but they change that there's some of that they have the scenes and some of the things are changed and it's interesting to watch for those differences you know it's interesting to see uh the character of carouge and his story and how he's viewed and then to see how he's viewed in the other two stories that we see and you get different perspectives and I like that so that's something good about the movie that you can watch and look for those little differences that's good and uh what else is good about it I have I have notes I made notes and uh, let's see oh we're gonna talk about the fight scenes so the fight scenes as bad as our half helm debacle is once those come off they have male coifs on Aventails, or uh, sorry, not Aventails, Aventails touched the home. They should have Aventails, they don't, but they have male coifs, mantles. They look, it looks good. Close up pictures of it that I've looked at, you know, actual links of male, probably budded aluminum. Uh, looks good. I like it. So there we go. And yeah, that shows the actor's face, but protects their head still. And some of the fight moves actually look good. There is some actual shortened sword or armored sword fighting. Harness fected, or as we would call it, don't fall swords. Today we call it half sword. So yes, we do see Matt Damon's character, Karuj, using the sword like this. But then he's also using the sword like this against armor in the fight, and it's like uh, no. But but we also see attacks to the gaps and weak spots in armor so at the same time as we see some things that are bad he's just battering on his opponent yeah concussive force with a sword is fine but but there are some scenes where the vulnerable spots are attacked there's dagger work there's some grappling and wrestling and uh, you know i think that it's okay it's better than a lot of fights that i've seen okay now, apparently, to what I've read, took two months to choreograph and two weeks to shoot. Could probably do better than that. Could probably choreograph it in a week, practice it in a couple weeks, shoot it in a week, and look good. I don't know. I'm not a movie set. I'm just making stuff up. Uh, but if I were doing it for a public demonstration, certainly we could do it quicker than two and a half months from start to showing it off. Why? Because fights are over quick but it's a movie and you have to have it drawn out and it has to build tension i get that so reality of sword fighting versus movie stuff it's nice to see some actual techniques and nice to see some things that look like well yeah that would probably have to happen that way in there and it's mixed in with some movie showmanship okay fine but anytime an actor does this yay we we should Give it a little bit of a chair. And there's more than just the actual duel. There's a few other fight things. There is a silly scene. I don't really know if it's a spoiler. Uh, it's French troops in a forest. Matt Damon's one of them. No helm, no coif, no nothing. And um, suddenly arrows come flying through into their position. And one dings off of his pauldron. And 
you probably would have hit him in the head and killed him. But, hey, it's a movie. It's supposed to make him look fearless and unstoppable, right? Karouge is supposed to be this great fighter character. So, whatever. It's fine. So, I think that covers all the things I want to talk about. And uh, it'll be quite a lengthy video if I just went on and on about these things. And I rambled enough. But, overall, should you watch this movie? And like I put into this, you know, the little still at the beginning. Short answer, yes, watch it. I think you should watch it. I think that as far as storytelling and getting some medieval things right... It's good. It's not going to be a great movie, but, you know, shut up that Ridley Scott. Show him that. Eh, we'll watch it. Just, um, you know, if you made better movies, if you listened to people who are actual experts and took their advice and followed it rather than just make concessions because actors need to show their faces, um, there are ways that you can show the actor's face. Visor up, visor down, visor up, visor down and still have something accurate without putting weird half homes in your movie and thus making us all think your movie is awful from the outset. Eh. That's really it. So, should you watch it? Sure. Go watch it. Watch it at home. Enjoy it for what it is. A story that is uncomfortable at times, be warned, but that's the subject matter. It is definitely not for kids. It's definitely for adults given what's going on. And... Watch it. If you have seen it, let me know what you think. You may not like it, and you don't have to, and we can certainly disagree on it. Like I said, I'm giving it a 3.5 out of 5. Definitely not a 4. There are enough issues that I have with it. But but I think you should still watch it. We don't get a lot of medieval movies. And uh, unless we support them, we won't get more. And, um, yeah. But all sorts of experts from amateur level to people like Dr. Tobias Capwell who know everything about armor and he probably would say that he doesn't but he really does um you know there are people out there that movie directors and production crews can ask and get the real details and make films that they're never going to be 100 percent accurate but can look better they can avoid the really bad glaring things they can get rid of some of the really bad stuff so that we don't notice it and thus we have a more enjoyable time watching them that's my movie review for The Last Duel. I hope that you have enjoyed. Do remember, like, subscribe, and of course comment because your comments do shape the channel. Looking forward to comments about the movie on this one. Who might get heated? I don't know. What is your opinion? Let me know. Remember, take care, stay safe, keep on swinging, and keep supporting your medieval movies.